Um, so let's talk about card readings. Um, I was really thinking about my audience on this video. So this video is definitely for um, people who- this video? Oh, so this crap, video. I better not do that. <laughs> this video is definitely for um, people who have never had a card reading before or had very few. Um, and don't know how they work really and want to know more about how they work. And this video is also for people who, um, <clears throat> people who want to be a reader of cards and they're just kind of uncertain how to start or where to start or they're just kind of drawn to it in general and want more information. So that if that's you, uh, any of that is you, this is a great video for you, okay? So I'm not gonna be doing any readings in this video. <laughs> just talking, I'm just a talking head. Um, <clears throat> so let's, let's talk a little about the history of card readings. Um, card readings are pretty old. They're hundreds of years old. Uh, looks like around the 1300s, um, card tarot cards were caught the attention of the aristocrats, aristocrats in um, Italy and it kind of, you know, it kind of snowballed from there and went across Europe um, with the, you know, like with royalty as a game of chance and kind of fortune telling, um, kind of light on the fortune telling, heavy on the, on the gambling, right? Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's kind of morphed and continued from there in the West, you know, in Western civilization. Um, card readings are um, kind of globally ever present. If we're talking about, you know, symbols put on paper or, you know, heavier material and um, dealt with with divination. Um, it's pretty old, it's pretty universal. And um, cards, especially tarot, have definitely been through it. They have been um, an object of derision and um, seen as dangerous. Um, and that's how the Christian church um, kind of framed it. The practice of reading cards cartomancy um, was kept alive in the West, I believe, by Roma people um, <clears throat> and uh, kind of in the, you know, the late 1800s, early 1900s, really kind of blossomed and kind of returned into uh, popularity, let's say, of um, doing cards. And Probably the most prominent card deck at that time was a Rider Waite Smith deck uh, that is a tarot deck. And um, all the tarot cards after that, including the current day, um, <clears throat> maintain the same uh, symbol system, the same system of that tarot deck. Um, to this day, even if they, you know, play with the symbols and add symbols and take away symbols, it's fundamentally keeping that same system. And by system, I mean like this card pretty much basically means this thing. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of the journey, the history 
journey of cards. Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know when, but I think it was pretty long ago. Just the minor arcana of tarot, which is most of the deck, like basically two thirds of the deck, uh, was morphed into playing cards. And that's what I'm fiddling with in my hands right now. Um, and it has four suits. And those four suits are based on the four suits of tarot. So for playing cards that we play games of chance with um, <clears throat> and gamble with, um, they really uh, just kind of threw out the um, major arcana except for joker cards. Um, there's two jokers in a playing card deck. And there's one Joker card in the regular tarot. Um, <clears throat> anyway, that was uh, maintained. And um, there's lots of games to be played with this. Uh, I think that there is a lot of correlation between playfulness and <clears throat> divination. Yeah. So I'm a diviner. Um, and this card reading, Cardomancy, is just a version of um, divination. And that means that we're looking for messages from some outside source, okay? Could be cards, could be runes, could be somebody's palm, it could be clouds, it could be um, a pendulum, it could be, but anyway, you're using a tool to bring in messages that you would not otherwise get. And they should be divinely inspired. That's why that divine word is in there for divination. Okay, so me personally, I think it helps me kind of turn off my logical brain somewhat and be more open to a message. And I envision that my spiritual team is uh, communicating with the spiritual team of the person I'm reading for. And, uh, you know, those two teams together are kind of like guiding what I choose. If it's cards or you know, if it's uh, a line in the hand or whatever, and are helping me get a message to the person I'm reading for that they wouldn't otherwise get. It's kind of like sneaking them some cheat sheets and some information uh, in a different way than they usually might get information. Um, but it's inspired by the person I'm reading for their spiritual team. It's not me. It's not about my ego. It's not about what I want for that person. <laughs> None of that um, should play a role in, in that. So um, <clears throat> thanks, Leanne. Yeah, that sounds good. So this is just a tool. So um, is it a good tool for you? I don't know, but let me tell you how these different tools work and, um, and, and I'll leave it up to you to decide, okay? So when I was a tiny little person, um, my grandmother and my mother, actually my mother didn't, just my grandmother, um, <clears throat> taught me how to read cards, but they only used playing cards um, because I have to tell you, tarot cards back in the day were really tough to get a hold of and they were super expensive, even if you could get a hold of them. There were not metaphysical shops in every town. You had to get stuff through catalog. You might have to get stuff from another country, mail order. Um, <clears throat> it was just really tough. 
And then, um, you know, these are not suspicious. Um, if you, if the only job that you had for money was being a reader, like was true for my grandmother, um, you could carry a pack of playing cards in your purse. And, you know, that doesn't make anybody bad an eye. Okay. So it's convenient. It's easy. It's pretty universal. Everybody is uh, at least familiar with playing cards as um, playing cards, right? So, um, you know, the, the spade suit, here's queen of spades, or I'm sorry, this is clubs. What am I saying? Queen of clubs. This is analogous to the suit of wands in tarot. Um, <clears throat> the here's seven of diamonds. This is analogous to the suit of swords in tarot. The queen of hearts. Here I have queen of hearts. It's upside down, I guess. Um, is analogous to um, the queen of cups, or that suit is the same as the suit of cups. Um, no, I messed up already. So diamonds are not the same as swords. Diamonds are like pentacles. Some suits, they're coins. But anyway, that uh, the pentacle, the five-sided shape got changed into a four-sided one. And then spades are analogous to swords in tarot. Here's king of swords. Um, <clears throat> and so if you know what, you know, you've memorized the system of tarot, as my grandmother did, um, you can read these at least for the minor arcana plus a joker or two um, for other people and give them messages. Um, <clears throat> So it takes a while, it takes a minute to memorize the system of tarot because each card has a meaning that carries over no matter the theme of the tarot cards. And I mean, there is like, I don't know, I don't know how many themes are out there, but it seems like there are thousands and thousands and thousands of different themes of tarot cards out there, which is wonderful. But still, like, for example, the full card is basically going to mean new beginnings and starting a journey without much uh, information, um, no matter what the theme of the tarot card deck is. Um, so the advantage of kind of memorizing this system is that, you know, no matter what the theme is, you will know basically what each card means. Um, <clears throat> and that's really just a starting point. You know, it's a great starting point and it's great to learn all that and, and kind of memorize it and work with it steadily um, to kind of absorb that and then, you know, jump to other themes and stuff. Um, but that's just one part of it, right? There is the surface meaning of a card. And then there's like what I call psychic hits that you get in a reading as a reader. So you get the full card, but you, um, you know, and you have that first layer of meaning that's like a new beginning and you may be like not very knowledgeable about what you're, where you're going. Um, but while you are looking at that card and, you know, dealing with that person's energy, you might get a message that is like, this is about the person's career, or this is about a new relationship, or this, you know what I mean? And it becomes a little more specific to the actual person you are reading for. 
And I think that part of it has to do with, you know, being psychic or exercising your psychic muscles or being a great messenger. Um, <clears throat> and that doesn't matter what kind of cards you use. You can use any old cards you want to, and that will still take place. But let me, let me just kind of show off all the tarot cards I have and, um, and talk about why I like them. And I hope in the end, you just see that like variety is, is um, kind of, I don't know. Anyway, you might, <laughs> you might be really drawn to something I share or something like that, okay? So um, this was the first tarot deck I got for myself. It's Cosmic Tarot. I got this when I was 17 years old. Um, <clears throat> so and I'm almost 50 now. So these are pretty, I'm kind of impressed that the box isn't more fallen apart than this. Um, it is kind of a riff off of classical um, Rider Waite um, Smith deck, um, which I actually don't like that deck because it's so yellow. I don't like that. <laughs> um, but I like I like this, um, and it's pretty realistic kind of art and very traditional symbology. Um, <clears throat> and this deck really helped me fine tune my knowledge and like memorizing of tarot that I started, you know, as a kid. This is a more recent deck that I got. Uh, last Thursday, I did readings. Um, in side chicks and I use this deck. Um, it's very feminine. Um, every single card has a, a, a picture of a female form, uh, character on it. And instead of kings for the court suits, you know, the court cards of each suit, it has muses. That's why it's called the muse tarot. And I like, I like the feminine theme. I also was really drawn to the artwork. It's kind of collagey. Um, <clears throat> it's very bright and colorful and I like that. Um, yeah, so you kind of get a feel for this. Um, I think it's, I think it's not so much a, a logical choice when you select a tarot card deck or any other kind of deck for yourself. It's more of a, you know, how do I respond to that? Um, this is the deck I'm using to like explain tarot one card at a time. I think you've seen elsewhere on my page. Um, and it's the Tarot of the Divine. And each card um, is using uh, symbols from around the world. So let's see if I can find it. This is the card that I shared today. It's Strength, which works out. It really tracks, doesn't it? It's International Women's Day. And strength card more traditionally has a female form on it, which is spectacular. I love it. This is the high priestess for using. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to mess her name up. I can like see it spelled, but I don't want to mispronounce it. But anyway. It's a main storyteller from 1001 Nights. <clears throat> yeah, it's really good. I like it. I like it. And as I 
you know, work with this deck, I feel like I'm also learning about um, mythology and fairy tales and everything from around the world. And I really like that. I like learning that kind of stuff. So it works out. This I think is my most comical deck. It's called Movie Tarot. And um, all the minor arcana, the numbered cards, they're all very plain, but all the court cards and the major arcana have movie characters like Here's Forrest Gump for the Fool. I don't know what is more perfect than that. That is like, I love that so much. Um, <clears throat> can't remember his name, but from The Martian. You know, the guy for the magician, and my goodness, didn't he have to be self-reliant being stuck on Mars? Um, <clears throat> God, oh gosh, why can't I remember her name? Olivia? No, something. Anyway, from Beetlejuice, Winona Ryder, she, uh, she was able to talk to the ghosts, connect with them. Yeah, so I mean, outstanding, right? I love it. Anyway, I love movies, so that all works out great. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of a, a newer Carol purchase as well. Uh, this is actually the deck my husband chose um, to learn with when we first got together. We've been together for 19 years and married for 17. This is kind of old. I don't crack this open in a spell. Um, my teen son likes this deck as well. Um, I mean, my husband has kind of been like, eh, you know, he's very blah about it, which is fine. Because um, then I get a new tarot deck. Okay. <laughs> but it's like wood block thing. So everything's black and white. Here's the fool. Here's the magician. Um, I think the artistry is really nice. Um, here's high priestess, the empress. Um, yeah, whoever made this was very talented. Um, who did make it? Block print by Michael Copford. Mm -hmm. And Brian Williams did the, whoops in wrong here, okay. Put these back. And these are very uh, like wide and big cards, which, um, you know, sometimes a person is in the mood for that. Here is the deck I got to help with teaching my kids. And honestly, it's like, you know, if I get a deck for kids, I'm not thinking this is super precious and I'm not gonna care if <laughs> anything happens to it. So <laughs> that all works out. I just love the byline on here too. It says, easy tarot, learn to read the cards once and for all. Like as if somebody had been struggling, 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 and they're like, oh, phew, with this deck, I could do it. But I don't think it works like that at all. Like, I just think all you really need is cards you're drawn to. And then just play with them and, and kind of um, deal with them on a consistent basis, even if it's super brief. Um, here's the fool. Um, I like this deck because we're dealing with pretty traditional symbol, symbol, you know, symbology. Um, 
but there's they're high contrast because they all have like black backgrounds, black borders, and a lot of brightness in the figures. Um, <clears throat> so I just I just think that's better at focusing your attention around the picture, um, just as a as a art student kind of kind of way. I'm like, yeah, that's that's great for learners. Um, a little bit more modern than my cosmic tarot as well. Um, and it had it comes with a great book with it as well. So there's that. And then I have one more tarot deck to show you. First of all, I'm gonna show you how giant this box is. This is the Salvador Dali tarot. This is a deck that he illustrated all the cards. And it was pretty much a nightmare to get him to finish, right? Cause he's like so terribly artistic. You know, it's like a 20 year project. Look at this book. I mean, honestly. And um, it's beautifully illustrated. But anyway, the cards are beautiful. Um, here's a gold box. And um, All the major arcana has kind of like gold borders. And I just really like Salvador Dali. So I like this deck. Um, <clears throat> I very infrequently, look at that. I very infrequently use this deck for readings because I get a little lost in the artwork, like that I'm a fan and I'm just like, oh, wow, look at that. I never saw that before, blah, 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 you know? So I get a little, it kind of, it can pull me out of <laughs> reading mode and more into <laughs> art appreciation mode. So I more often use this deck uh, for readings for myself personally, um, because you know there's no pressure, there's no nobody else looking at me expecting me to give them the answer right there. I can take my time, whatever. So those are currently the tarot decks I have, and I know that seems like a lot of cards. Um, but I think I've been very good in not having too many cards. And then I got this whole other stack of Oracle cards. So first, what's the difference? What's the deal with Oracle cards? Well, Oracle cards are really any deck that is not following the tarot system of meaning and you know like having the same cards and four suits and all that um <clears throat> it's just anything that doesn't have that so that is like anything goes right so that covers a lot of variety and i'm about to show you just with my cards how big that variety can be and um the thing with oracle is that you know you have to learn the kind of like the rules and the the meanings of the cards you know deck by deck right and some of them are that's no problem that's super easy no problem and then some of them are like wow i got to really i got to really practice with this i got to study it i got to you know, really handle it a lot. So that's the thing. Of course, whatever you're drawn to, you're drawn to, okay? So this, I'm gonna talk about this one first. This is 
the power animal oracle deck and I no longer use this or I only use it to myself. It's very old. I've had it for a really long time. Um, but it was given to me a long time ago before, uh, you know, the kind of the cultural appropriation of indigenous peoples around, you know, animal spirit guides uh, was kind of front and center in the spiritual world um, in the Wu places. And if you notice, the author of this is not, he is not indigenous. Stephen D. Farmer is the author. Um, so this is like, I don't know. I don't know why I keep it actually, but anyway, you live and you learn, right? And then this is kind of recent. It was given to me as a gift, talking to heaven. I really love James Von Prague. He's a very talented medium. He's pretty famous. Um, and then he made this deck to kind of facilitate doing mediumship readings. And um, he has, uh, you know, in his booklet here, he has a lot to say of how to prep and how to like pull these cards, um, but the cards themselves, here's the cover, the cards themselves are super easy because they just all have a sentence that is a message from a past loved one. Um, I think this is hard to see, but it says you have nothing to feel guilty about. So, um, <clears throat> you know, that can just kind of get the juices flowing kind of, uh, and help that, especially if you are kind of new to mediumship. And then, honestly, I wanted to learn more about the Bhagavad Gita uh, in general. And so I got this deck to help me um, kind of study and get the symbols down and everything. Um, so it's kind of new to me too. I do think it's beautiful. Um, <clears throat> and like the artwork is like, um, it's not original. These are like classic pictures or they might be modern pictures, but they're pretty well known and famous pictures of a deity. And then just on the back has like the meaning, the message, it has it in Sanskrit, um, it has it in Hindi, and then it has it in English. And then I've been writing like the name of the God. So this is Krishna. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I don't, I don't use these for readings at all because I feel like it's a study guide for me um, and not really ready for readings, but you know, you never know. might have to bust them out. And then um, my oldest uh, Oracle deck, and it was given to me by my mother. Um, I have to keep in this super girl metal box with a window because it's just so old that I, you know, the box fell apart a long time ago. And um, I use the, this deck most often for um, readings that I do on Thursday nights. Um, and the the, there are some symbols that really coincide with tarot, and then there's some that don't. And this is definitely a deck that took me quite a bit of time to learn, and um, and I just love it. And I've, since I've been using it so long, I probably get the most consistent and clear psychic messages using these cards because me and this deck are really aligned. So 
anyway, it does have a joker. It has Mercury instead of the magician, but the symbology is similar. It does have a high priestess card. It has a scarlet woman instead of the empress. Uh, and then the theme of this deck is tantric. Um, and that is a religion that I know something about, not everything, but something about. So that flavors a lot of the symbolism there. Then I have this deck, which is called the Cosmic Dancer, Dancer Oracle deck, which I really love because for every card, this is all the covers, for every card, there is recommended a dance move or a yoga pose um, to really kind of integrate the message. So like just randomly here is this card says create sacred space. And it does have a meditative type pose suggested for this card to help you get started on creating a sacred space. So I think this deck really works well with groups, like doing readings for a group, like for like the whole group to have a card pulled or something like that. Um, and it's made, this deck is made by a dancer and a, a card reader, an oracle card reader. And then I got this Kabbalah deck. And again, I got this as a study aid to help deepen my understanding about Kabbalah. I've never used this for readings. I've had this deck for a really long time though. Um, this was my second Oracle deck purchase. And the cards are actually super duper simple, simple because it's most of the cards are just al Hebrew alphabet letters, but everything's in gold. I think it's hard to show up. Um, this says Zayn. Um, and then the book really helps you understand what the meaning of that letter is because there's a lot of meaning attached to individual letters, individual numbers in Jewish mysticism, including the Kabbalah. And then this was a recent gift. It's the Hedge Witch Botanical Oracle. I'm noticing a theme. So what I really appreciate this about this deck I, is that it is helping me learn more about plants um, because it um, has more to say in the guidebook about like recipes to use, how it can be used medicinally, and kind of like where it's found, you know, in the world, um, then it does say about like what it means, you know, as an oracle. And it's like drawings that are partially colored. Here, this one is about strength too. And I just picked it. And it's a bear berry, okay? This is a really hardy plant, right? Um, so this is a real, this is a real opportunity kind of day, real gift. Um, <clears throat> and I hope someday to be really intimate with this and then I kind of like move it over to like being something I can use very, much with readings. Uh, this is a deck that's all about the Dalai Lama, uh, who I just admire so much. Um, 
And all the cards have on one side have a picture of him. And then on the other side, oops. Oh, how cute. And then on the other side, it has a quote. It has a quote from him. This one is about generosity. And it says, giving is not merely a remedy against greed. The purpose of generosity is to increase the courage of giving. This is called the transcendent perfection of generosity. Wow, that's deep. So I really love to use these cards as a meditative tool, like pull a card and kind of like meditate on that quote or um, kind of like deepen my understanding to myself. So that's not really a great one for doing readings for other people either. <laughs> more for my study so I'm different than you you don't have to be like me but I tend to use oracle cards more for study and um, my own spiritual practice than for readings with the exception of this one the secret Dakini oracle deck um, that one is a good one for me to use for readings um, <clears throat> And then I'm at home with tarot. So thank you for looking at my collection with me. I hope this helps you in some way uh, make decisions about um, how you want to enter into card readings, uh, whether as a, a, as a client or as a reader, um, and that it informs your decisions and um, kind of deepens your understanding of the whole process. So uh, I wish you luck and I wish you a really great week. All right, see you around. Thanks for joining me. Bye.